Welcome to Blossoming by Grace and Grit. This is our journey with God. The name of our devotional today is the constant heart. But first let us pray. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9 reads, My grace is sufficient for you. For my power is perfected in weakness. Father God, thank you so much for the gift of grace, my Father. Oftentimes, many of us don't even understand your grace. For many, grace is something that we accept when it is there for us, but yet we don't understand the grace that you provide to others how you can forgive the unforgivable sins. But my Father, we thank you because you are a God of justice. You are a God of light, of truth, my Father. And so being a God of justice makes you a God of fairness. And therefore, grace is the unmerited favor. It is a gift that we don't deserve. That is the first thing that we need to understand, that none of us deserve the grace of God. Not us, or the person that has offended you, or the person that is wonderful and magnificent. No one deserves the grace of God. Because we have all fallen short of the glory of God. Therefore, what that means is that there is not one of us, O God, that is truly good. And you say it in your word, my Father, you are so clear, my God. And the Ten Commandments proved, my Father, that it was a mirror so that we could understand our sinfulness, my Father. Lord, but I just want to say that grace is such a wonderful thing. It is such a beautiful gift for those that really receive it and understand it and, and basically give it to others because it is not a gift for us to keep, but it is a gift for us to give away. Oh, Father, thank you so much for the gift of grace, for giving me, for forgetting that I am to walk in it every day. Thank you, Lord God, for forgiving me when I forget to walk in your grace every day. Help me to remember that it, it is okay to be weak when I am. I'm more reliant on you than ever before. Help me to stop beating myself up for mistakes I've made and instead hold on to the full measure of grace that you have instilled in my life. I want to rest in knowing that I am not alone. You are with me. You have me covered. In your great grace and in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. A constant heart. It is a heart that stays on the course. It is a heart that is unmoved, unshaken, unstirred. It is a heart that is constant every single day. It is a heart that is not divided. It is a heart that operates based on convictions and not emotions. A constant heart is a heart that will produce fruit on a regular basis. It is a heart that spends the time with Jesus, that spends the time in prayer, that spends the time in journaling and seeking his face on a daily basis, the consistency of a constant heart requires commitment, it requires faithfulness, it requires perseverance. For most of us, commitment and doing things over and over again intimacy in a relationship might cause a little bit of claustrophobia or anxiety. Some people have commitment phobia. 
Other people have intimacy issues. And imagine Jesus, him having to deal with three years of going and coming and just being around the same crew, the same people. By and large, he saw the same dozen or so faces around the table, around the campfire, and around the clock. They rode in the same boats and walked in the same roads and visited the same houses. And I wonder sometimes, how did Jesus stay so devoted to his men? Not only did he have to put up with their visible oddities, he had to endure their invisible foibles. Think about it. He could hear their unspoken thoughts. He knew their private doubts. Not only that, he knew their future doubts. What if you knew the mistakes of your loved ones? Everything that they're thinking, everything that they're saying, even when you're not present. What if you knew every thought they would have about you, every irritation, every dislike, and every betrayal? Was it hard for Jesus to love Peter, knowing Peter would someday curse him? Was it tough to trust Thomas, knowing Thomas would one day question Jesus' resurrection? How did Jesus resist the urge to recruit a new batch of followers? John wanted to destroy one enemy. Peter sliced off the ear of another. Just days before Jesus' death, his disciples were arguing about which one of them was best. How was he able to love people who were who were really hard to like. For situations like these, sometimes they stir panic like being trapped in a relationship with people that you don't even love or like. It's one thing to be stuck with a puppy, but something else entirely to be stuck in a marriage. We may chuckle over goofy terms like being stuck or stuck-itis, but for many, there is no la- it is no laughing matter. For that reason, I think it's wise that we study Jesus' heart of forgiveness to understand what it means to be just like him. Jesus was able to love his disciples despite everything that he knew about them. And how are you able to love your family How are you able to love the people that God has put in your sphere of influence? How are you able to love someone that you need to overcome their mistakes or you need to overcome their rudeness or you need to overcome their judgments of you? How are you going to love those people? And Jesus is calling us to go into deeper levels, deeper levels of forgiveness, deeper levels of growth, deeper levels of maturity. He is calling us to deeper levels of love. And the reality is that one day we will stand before our Maker. And the reality is that he is going to ask us an account of what he gave us, of what he taught us in the word of God and we never did, on how he has spoken different precepts and yet we've never obeyed. We will have to give an account of the people that we never forgave. We have to give an account of the of the talents and abilities that we never put to use for the benefit of others, for the benefit of Jesus, for his people, his children, his kingdom. We will have to give an account. So let us practice today having a constant heart, meaning if we read the word of God and it says to do a specific thing, why don't we do it? Put it to use, put it to work. Let the word work in you. 
don't only be hearers of the word. If you hear the word, it's really not going to have the effect that it should have in our life. But once you do the word, that is the different story altogether. So I encourage you today to have a constant heart. Have a blessed day. Thank you so much, my Lord. Thank you so much for this word. You are truly amazing and your gift of grace is just wonderful, my Father. I just give you honor and praise and all the glory be to you today and every day. Thank you so much. Amen. My friend, I encourage you to play in the light, play in the sunshine and dance in the rain. Also, if you're driving a vehicle, please drive polite. And I also remind you, keep on smiling because God loves you so very, very much. Until we meet again, have a blessed day. This is a prayer to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Father God, thank you so much, my Lord, for Jesus. Thank you so much that I realize that I am a sinner and that I need a Savior, God. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the precious blood that was shed on the cross at Calvary for me, for my sins. Lord Jesus, I ask you forgiveness for every one of my sins. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. I give you my word that from this day forward, I will follow you. I will read the word, I will go to church, and I will spend time with you, Lord Jesus. I want to get to know you more. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for making something of my life that is worthwhile, something wonderful. Thank you, Lord, for accepting me as your son, as your daughter, into the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord, for your love, for your great grace, in your name I pray, Lord Jesus. Thank you for receiving me today. Amen. My friend, if you have made this prayer, if you have said this prayer, I congratulate you for because today there is a celebration in heaven. The Bible says that when one sinner repents, there is a celebration. In other words, there is a party in the kingdom of God. And so I congratulate you because it is the absolute best decision that you will ever make or have ever made in your life. Many blessings to you and to your family. In Jesus' name, amen.